Hi boys and girls, this is Mrs. Clark and tonight I'm going to read to you chapter 5 of The World According to Humphrey. Chapter 5 is called Plans Are Hatched. When Mr. Morales went into the kitchen to get a glass of water, I carefully opened the lock that doesn't lock and slipped out of my cage. I leaped over the chair, then scampered down to the floor and hid in the corner behind the long curtains. Mr. Morales returned and sat down again. The children were still thumping and bumping and were now screaming and screeching as well. Say, Humphrey, maybe you need some water too, he said and leaned toward the cage. Mr. Morales gasped when he saw that it was empty. Humphrey, where did you go? Oh, I should have known you'd escaped. I'd run away from those kids if I could too, but do me a favor, Humphrey, please come out. In a panic, he darted around the room. Kids in room 26 will hate me if I lose you, he said. I felt sorry for Mr. Morales, so I scratched around a little. There you are, he said, bending down to look at me. Now let's get you back in your cage. Not quite yet, I thought. He reached down to pick, to pick up and scampered forward just a few inches past his hand. Don't do this to me, Humphrey, he said. Corporate? But I wasn't doing anything to him. I was doing something for him. Work with me, he said, but this time to himself. Maybe. Hey, that's it. He looked down at me. With your help, Humphrey. Mr. Morales really swung into action then. He raced upstairs. The thumping and bumping stopped. When he raced back downstairs, Willie and Brenda were with him. Close all the doors, Willie, he said. But Dad, Willie whined. Close them, his father repeated firmly. Now. Willie closed all the doors. You too scared poor Humphrey with your screaming and poking and thumping. We may never see him again, he told them. Brenda burst into tears. Humphrey's dead, she sobbed. No, Humphrey's too smart for that, Mr. Morales told her. But he will run away if you two aren't nice to him. Right, right, right. You have to be pretty smart to be a principal. Now, do you want to help me with to get Humphrey back? Yes, the children shouted. Mr. Morales explained the plan. He said the only way they'd get me back in the cage was if they worked together, and they could only work together if they listened to him, really listened. They were listening now, and they kept listening too, because he told them the most important thing they could do was be quiet. So they were quiet. I'm pretty sure he's still in my room. Our job is to lure him back into his cage, Mr. Morales whispered. He put my cage in the middle of the floor. Then he went to the kitchen and he got a handful of sunflower seeds. Willie and Brenda helped him make a trail of seeds across the floor leading up to the cage. Good, said Mr. Morales. Now we have to be very, very quiet and wait for Humphrey to pick up the seeds. But if you say so anything or even move, you might scare him. We'll be quiet, Dad, said Willie. Brenda agreed. They all sat on the sofa. Do you think it will work, Willie whispered? Of course, Brenda answered. Dad's smart. Well, he's not the only one. I waited for a while. After all, the Morialis children needed all the practice staying quiet they could get. When Willie gets restless, I started skittering along the floor. I hear him, said Brenda. Shh, said Willie. I waited a few more seconds. Then I scrambled out of the corner and grabbed the closest seed. I could hear loud gasps from the children, but I pretended not to notice. I scurried toward the second seed. This plan Mr. Morales and I came up with was a tasty, tasty, tasty. I could almost feel three pair of eyes fixed on me, but I ignored them. I grabbed up the third and fourth seeds hid them in my cheek pouch, then stopped right outside the out open door of the cage. Inside, Mr. Morales had left a lovely pile of sunflower seeds. It was nice to be free, but my cage was home after all. Besides, until the day somebody fixes that lock, doesn't lock, I can get out whenever I want. The kids were still quiet, so I made a run for the cage. Mr. Morales quickly closed the door, and the children began to cheer. We did it, said Brenda. Dad's the smartest man in the world, said Willie. Hey, you kids helped. When we cooperate and work together, we make a pretty good team, Mr. Morales told them. Willie agreed, the best. Mr. Morales squatted down and winked at me. Of course Humphrey helped too. I'll say. 
The rest of the weekend with the Morales family was fine. Sometimes the kids started interrupting their dad or mom, but Mr. Morales just reminded them that they could be polite if they tried. Willie and Brenda tried. Mrs. Morales sold a house. It turns out that selling other people's houses is her job too. So they celebrated with pizza and ice cream. Brenda learned to hold me gently. Willie even cleaned the, poo cleaned the poo out of the cage, which I appreciated. Life is good, I thought, as Mr. Morales drove me back to school Monday morning. Then I remembered Mrs. Brisbane and how she said I was a troublemaker and she was going to get rid of me. Humphrey, you're a true friend, said Mr. Morales as he carried my cage back into room 26. I'll never forget what you did for me. As soon as class started on Monday, Heidi's mom came into the classroom and explained to everyone about taking me home on weekends. How many of you would be interested? Mrs. Hopper asked. Every single hand in the classroom was raised. Every hand except one, Mrs. Brisbane's. Still, it was a pretty good week. I got a 90% on the vocabulary test. I'll bet Shay got 100%, but she didn't raise her hand, even though she'd promised. And Aldo talked more and more every night. On Tuesday night, he leaned in close and asked Humphrey, don't you ever wish you had a girlfriend? Like most hamsters, I'm pretty much of a loner, so I really hadn't thought about it before. Not sure, I squeaked. I would like one, said Aldo, a real nice girlfriend. I felt so sorry for Aldo, I squeaked extra loud when he performed his broom balancing act for me. I was still thinking about him on Wednesday, after everyone had left. While there was still light coming in the window, I meandered outside the cage to help myself to any mealworms that Heidi might have left behind when she fed me earlier in the day. The table was covered with newspapers, and while I nibbled, I browsed the news. All of life was there on the pages of the newspaper. Births and deaths, lost pets, sad, 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 funny jokes, good news and bad news. Then there were the ads. My, there were so many stores, not just Petarama, but Shoesarama and Foodarama and Books Galore and wide, wide World of Tools. And there were other ads, too. One in particular caught my eye that afternoon. It read, Work Nights? Lonely? Want to meet others who work nights? The Moonlighters Club. For people who work at night, meeting are, meetings are held during the day on weekdays. Hikes and outings to the restaurant, parks, plays, movies, and much more. There was a name and a phone number at the end. I could hardly believe it. This was exactly what Aldo needed. I could already see him smiling and happy, going to the parks and plays with the Moonlighters Club and having a girlfriend. But how could I get Aldo to read this ad? He'd probably just throw it away. Still, if I could cut it out and, and left it in a place where he wouldn't miss it, well, maybe. Hamsters can't do scissors, but we have nifty teeth. It took me a while to nibble the whole ad out neatly, but I did a pretty good job. Then I stood the clipping up against my cage. Aldo couldn't help but see it if he looked at me, which he always did. That evening, I was more anxious than usual for Aldo to arrive. When he turned on the lights, I squeaked hello right away. Greetings to you, my friend, said Aldo as he pushed his cart into the room. You sound like you have something on your mind. You bet, I tried to tell him. He ampled over to my cage and leaned down to look in. What's happening, Humphrey, he asked. I saw his eyes light on a scrap of newspaper. Hey, I can hardly see you. He reached out and pushed the clipping aside. Read it, I squeaked right out. Of course, he didn't understand. I didn't even look at what the ad said. He just set it down next to the cage and leaned in closer. I was squeaking a blue streak. Look at it now. Calm down, Humphrey. I've got a treat for you, said Aldo. He reached into his pocket and he pulled out a tiny bit of carrot. Your pale Aldo would never forget you. My heart sank. You try to help a human and they don't even pay attention. But as you know, I don't give up easily. I squeaked happily while he balanced his broom on one finger as usual. But my mind was on the Moonlighters Club and how to get Aldo there. After he left, I scrambled out of the cage, picked up the newspaper clipping and tucked it inside my notebook. Then I hid the notebook behind my mirror. If I didn't, somebody mean like Mrs. Brisbane might throw it away. I was still wondering what to do with it the next day when Mrs. Brisbane rolled in a cart with a big machine on it. This is the overhead projector, she told the class. I'm going to use it for some map work. When Mrs. Brisbane turned the machine on, a bright light was projected